Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'll be going over changelog 0.5.1 for Nightingale. The server maintenance has completed itself, so let's get right into the notes and see what has changed. Realm Walkers, our server maintenance has concluded and our servers are now back online. Please update your game to ensure you can access online mode once again. The below items will not apply to the offline mode until you update the game. It's recommended to restart Steam or Epic or verify your game files to make sure you're on the latest version. The game version shows in the main menu when you start the game. Bug fixes, progression blockers, fix to reduce, eliminate Dobbins errors. I'm not sure what that is. Sheltered effect is better respected in caves, sites of power, the stick tents, which means rain should no longer cause players to be unable to use Grammy's campfire. Nelly no longer tells you to find a fabled automation knight when you actually need to find a fabled automation bishop. Yeah, I could see why that would be very confusing. Art slash visual. Bound Assassin's Blade should now show as intended when it is thrown. Wear and tear visual changes should be back on tools as the durability decreases. Fix an issue that could cause crafting benches to display fire VFX while extinguished. I've actually seen this bug and I've also seen the Assassin's Blade bug. This is really important because I'm pretty sure you can like parry this, but since there was like no animation, I, it, I mean, how can you block something you can't see, right? So that's good. Let's see, wear and tear visuals. So I actually had no idea. So this is, this is a little embarrassing for me to even say this, but I had no idea there were even wear and tear visual changes to tools as the du durability decreases like i had no idea that was even supposed to be a thing um probably because it wasn't working i guess i don't know usually i notice those kinds of details so it was kind of weird reading this uh audio sfx fix an issue that could cause fleeing creatures to trigger combat music yep that happens all the time fix an issue that could cause audio to briefly cut out when approaching certain pois hmm i think i've had that happen like once or twice Fix a rare crash caused by multi-threading race condition in the audio engine. Okay. I haven't crashed yet uh, since the new update, so I guess, well, that's interesting. Combat. Slingbow marbles now properly apply debuff effects when shot. Okay. Recruitable NPCs no longer stop performing all their tasks if an encumbered player is nearby. Interesting. Adjustments to Humbaba movement to prevent sliding. Fixed an NPC POI in Herbarium Forest where players could not use the stairs to reach the top of the foundation. All right, I haven't actually gone to the Herbarium Forest realm yet, so that's interesting. Elder Jotun should no longer stand idle for long periods of time. When they say stand idle, I wonder what they mean by that. Like, do they mean like out of the ground and just standing there if you run out of range or something? Like, I kind of wonder. Uh, Sheliak, hope I said that right, will now apply heavier gravity to players as it is charging even if a gravitational realm card is on the realm. Bound Assassin can no longer hit players through walls with its throwing blade attack. Oh, I didn't even know that was a bug. Yeah, that's, that's actually uh, pretty bad. Interesting. Player character. Voice type selection and character creation should no longer reset to type A after choosing another option. Players should no longer temporarily spawn under the world when returning to the crossways. I've never seen that. I actually, I don't think I've ever like even noticed that if it did happen to me. That's kind of weird. Quests. Desmo will no longer have the dialogue option, quote, the potions seem to work on the roots, end quote, before the player has completed the required quest. I wonder why. I, I think, uh, you know what? I think the reason might be that it doesn't actually progress the quest um, dialogue part. So that's kind of interesting. Implemented a fix that should make it easier to build near Joan of Arc. There are no longer two quests called an astral pull. Yeah, I thought that was weird. 
I'm glad they uh, changed that. Hope Echo has been updated to mention the correct current realm location of Ludivine St. Clair. Okay. UI UX changes. Let's see. Player names no longer show up on the map when streamer mode is on. Ooh, okay. Well, that's cool. Watering UI should no longer show on non-valid objects. I've never seen that, but okay. <laughs> Permission buttons on storage containers should now be highlighted properly. I guess there might have been a bug there where like when you um, interact with the containers and you say, you know, building is allowed or something like that. The it, It's supposed to, when you click on it, the button's supposed to turn like yellow. I have had a couple of times where the buttons don't change color like they're supposed to. And then I'm like, why can't I access these materials while I'm building? And then I go back and I check and it's not highlighted. So I, I don't know what that bug was about, but I mean, it's listed as UI UX, but it, it it's kind of weird. Adjustment to the in-game tutorial notifications that appear on the left side of the screen to be clamped to a 16 to 9 ratio and animate from the center, hopefully making them harder to miss for players. Updated NPC shop visuals to be more aligned with our black and gold aesthetic. Okay. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Uh, miscellaneous improved performance for the crafting recipe menu, especially after using autofill and various visual and audio bug fixes. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see game changes, art slash visual moved position of crossways portal glyphs. Really? Why move to the position of their glyphs? I'm trying to think of like what the reason for this might be, but I'm not, you know what I'm thinking? Uh, I think if I remember correctly, I think the portal glyphs are like at the base of the statues behind where the portal will spawn. Maybe they're adding it like on top or something. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Adjusted VFX for ranged AOE attack on low quality graphics. So for example, sling bow ammo. Added visual dressing to the final Magwitch site of Power Chamber. Combat. Sickle's second ability, Throw, or also known as Sickle Rang, can now be used when the player has only one stamina remaining. Ooh, that's kind of nice. That's a nice buff. NPCs. The work here radius has been increased for recruitable NPCs. Nice. Only recruited NPCs are allowed to pick up items off the ground. Okay. Wisp colors have been adjusted to be closer to the color of the essence they spawn. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. The wisps, um, it's weird. Like when you, when you confront like the, the bluish wisp, like the tier three wisp, Sometimes they look a little bit green or like a turquoise color in the like certain types of lighting and stuff. So I, I can see why they did that. It's very weird. Player character. You can now export and import character appearances to new or existing profiles in the first step of character creation slash editing for additional details. See here. Okay. Uh... So, it, okay, so it looks like step one, import appearance, export appearance, it looks like if you, uh, if we zoom in here, so it looks like they just implemented that, that's, okay, I, I don't think there's much more to really go over here. Um, a full beard facial hair option has been added to the character creator. I know a lot of people were asking for that, so that's great. The text for the drifter loadout has been updated, okay. Progression slash quests players now <clears throat> players can now get the campfire recipe for free if they complete Grammy's quest before unlocking it in the progression tree. That makes sense. Various advanced quests have been adjusted to mention unlocking items in the progression menu, such as establish a base. Tailson's side quests will no longer automatically be pushed to your quest tracker, but can be pinned there by going to your quest menu. I think the reason why they, they made this change is because when t when you get the quest from Tailson, like he gives you like five quests, I think. So you're kind of clogging up your journal. <laughs> yeah, so I can kind of understand why they did that. 
Nelly's quest will now only accept resources from Gauntlet Apexes. Oh, that's a big change. So basically now you have to go to the Gauntlet to get these items. That's still, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to have to look into this. I'm going to have to look into this, the whole Gauntlet thing, because I, I literally just got to that part in the um, progression. And I'm curious to see how that will uh, change things up. Resources. Added magic power stats to shimmering resources. So now it provides 6% critical damage plus 4% magic power. Oh, that's nice. You can find shimmering pretty much anywhere. It's like one of the more common, like better stats um, ones you could get. The, now that it has magic power, it definitely gives a lot more reason to make a shimmering weapon or something uh, earlier on in the game. So I guess that that actually kind of helps. Added max health and max stamina to nickel. So now it provides 20 maximum health plus 10 maximum stamina plus 10% environmental resistance. Okay, so that's that's nice. So now we got nickel and shimmering buffs. Cool. The amount of essence extracted from arrows has been adjusted. Oh, okay, so I wonder if this is because you're using different materials to make the arrows. Like, I wonder if... Like, I want to say before it was just like you... If you want to extract essence, it was just one to one ratio, but it's probably two to one now, maybe, if I had to guess. I'm going to have to check in game, though. I'm not entirely sure. Adjusted lumber burn time to be greater than wood bundles. Oh, see, now I have a reason to put lumber in there. <laughs> UI UX. Updated input hint textures to be less pixelated at small sizes. Okay. Added a map pin to the bunker in Hollowed Moor for Poe's quest. All right. I have not gotten there yet. Additional icons for consumables, undergarments, and Regency tile set have been added. Miscellaneous. Downloading your online characters from our website to transfer them to offline mode now includes the folder with your Steam ID in it, and can be exported to the same folder as legacy slash archived characters. Our documentation has been, or shortly after this post, updated to reflect this change. Okay, so if you guys want to do that, there you go. Various minor text edits for clarity and consistency, various text updates for non-English languages, various minor visual updates for consistency. We're still working on some high priority bug fixes, and high friction progression areas, but we wanted to get this patch up for those playing over the weekend. Thank you for your patience and for joining us on this journey, the Nightingale team. Wow, yeah, it's a pretty good uh, patch. It feels more like a hot fix. Uh, there's a lot of um, bug fixes and things like that. So, very good. I think that the biggest parts of this uh, patch is probably the buffs to nickel and shimmering uh when i say shimmering i'm talking about like the ore right so um you know for those of you who might be a little bit newer to the game your materials that you're using to craft your gear affects the uh the stats that your gear has so when you try to build something with shimmering or or with nickel now you're going to get these extra bonuses so I wonder if this is going to apply retroactively. So like if you already have an item that is, you know, built with like nickel or something, like I wonder if it's going to uh, reflect that change or if you're going to have to craft another weapon in order to adopt that change. Because uh, I know that does happen sometimes when games are updated is that, you know, whatever is already made is just kind of left alone. But yeah, it's a good patch. It has a lot of good stuff in it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, my name is Sholo Q. I'm a Sholo Quintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream three times a week on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. And you can find me uh, playing Nightingale nowadays on streams. So feel free to go check that out. I usually post my schedule every Sunday on the YouTube community tab, Twitter, and my fandom Discord. So feel free to go check that out. All right, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, Sholo out.